welcome back, beloved. I hope you'll find today's video very interesting. Uh, it's titled, Jim Carrey Says You Are God. And if you know, uh, if have been following my channel for a while, you know I've made several videos, different theologians, different preachers, different famous people seem to have this idea that we are God. You're going to see Jim Carrey say every cell of your body is God. And beloved, when we look at what's going on in the world right now, I want you to understand scripture is really coming to life. And so when I see certain things like this, it really just blows my mind. So I just want to I want to pull up a picture. I hope you're watching. This is the actor and I love Jim Carrey. I grew up watching Dumb and Dumber. This is the actor known for Dumb and Dumber. Like that's probably Jim Carrey's like best work ever, right? And now we're going to him and listening to him for spiritual wisdom. And so I want you to understand when Israel fell away from the Lord, just like America has, uh, in Micah chapter 2, he's chastising them for their sin, for their uncleanness. And then he says this, and I want you to tie in this verse with today. If a man walking after wind and falsehood, a false prophet, a false teacher, a silly man walking after the wind, right, had told the lies and said, I will speak out to you, I will preach to you concerning wine and liquor, he would be the spokesman to this people. And so Yahweh is saying, the Lord is saying here, you've fallen so far from true wisdom that if I sent somebody there to preach to you about wine and beer and whiskey, that person would be your preacher. I mean, we've gotten to the point where we're listening to the dumb and dumber guy. You're going to see a speech here in a second. We're listening to Jim Carrey for wisdom. Isaiah chapter 30, once again, the Lord is talking to his people when they fall away from him. And, and uh, they said, when you fall away, you'll go to the seers, you'll go to the prophets, you'll go to the preachers, you'll go to the wise men and tell them, you must not see visions. You can't prophesy to us what is right. Speak to us pleasant words, prophesy illusions. And so I want you to watch this video. Uh, I'll break it down with a little more commentary. And then I want to tie it in with some other verses, specifically showing you how we are not God and how the devil has been using this deception to corrupt humanity. I made a decision to transcend and to leave darkness behind. <laughs> And it takes a champion to make that decision. And what you're going to see here is he hasn't left darkness behind. He's still spreading the same lie of thousands of years ago from the devil. Mankind is not evolving into anything. We are devolving. We fell from perfection. We fell from grace. We are getting worse. We are not transcending. We are not getting better. And uh, you know, I really want to speak to the fact that I've had some challenges in the last couple of years myself. Uh, and uh, ultimately, I believe that suffering leads to salvation. And in fact, it's the only way that uh, we have to somehow accept, and not deny, but feel our suffering and feel our losses. And, uh, and then we make one of two decisions. We either decide to go through the gate uh, resentment, which leads to vengeance, which leads to self-harm, which leads to harm to others, or we go through the gate of forgiveness, which leads to grace. And uh, your being here is an indication that you've made that decision already. You've made the decision to walk through the gate of forgiveness to grace, just as Christ did on the cross. You see, beloved, it sounds good. He's a handsome man. He sounds smart and he is eloquent, but he's preaching to you wind. It's hard to figure out in the last minute and 20 seconds what the heck he means. Is it our forgiveness that saves us because we have to bear our own suffering? Did Christ bear our own suffering? Is it a little bit of both? We can use the name of Christ all day. Islam reveres the name of Christ but they don't believe Jesus is God. Buddhism loves Jesus for how forgiving he is, and he's this great world teacher, but he's not God, and he did not die for sinners. Catholics love Jesus. They believe he's God, 
but they believe you add your own works to that instead of understanding that all of our good works are filthy rags before God's holiness. He suffered terribly and he was broken by it to the point of doubt and a feeling of absolute abandonment, which all of you felt. So slippery. You've all felt what Christ has felt? You've all felt abandonment like the holy Lamb of God? Beloved, we have not felt what Christ has felt, and we should not raise ourselves up to that. Now, I'm all for taking care of those in trauma. I'm all for spending time with the homeless. Christians need to be spending time with the drug addicts and the prostitutes and the lowest people of the cities and, the, and, and states. Absolutely. No doubt. But we don't just go out to them and make it all about them. You see, I, I believe we're one of the most spoiled generations in all of human history, and yet we continuously find a way to make ourselves victims. And that's not good for us. That's not loving. That's not truthful. It's not going to help people. And uh, then there was a decision to be made. And the decision was to look upon the people who were causing that suffering, or the situation that was causing that suffering, with compassion and with forgiveness. And that's what opens the gates of heaven for all of us. Sounds good. Like, yeah, Christ's forgiveness opens up the gates for all of us. But beloved, you have to actually understand what's happening on the cross. God the Father is satisfying his wrath against sin, satisfying the justice for all who would ever believe. Christ is literally being sacrificed for their sins. It wasn't just Christ's personal attitude or how loving he was, which is so amazing, how gentle he was, how sweet he was. He's actually bearing the wrath of God, actually being punished and crushed by God, not just the Roman soldiers. That was nothing compared to the cup of God's wrath he drank for us. And that is so important that we understand that, because a lot of people look up to Jesus, but they don't want a sacrifice for their sins. They don't think they need it. And and so I'm going to finish with this last clip here, and this is where he says, you are God. Bigger than these thoughts. I am bigger than this body. You know, they talk about omnipresence in church, and nobody really thinks about what that means. What it means is every cell of your body is God. Nobody thinks about what that means. No, that's such an arrogant statement. I think about the omnipresence of God all the time. I know th hundreds of faithful pastors that think about it, that God is everywhere, and yet he is the creator and also outside his creation. We are not God. We are fallen creatures. Beloved, I wouldn't go up to a drug addict and just start with this, but I will teach it to you. You need to understand something about the human race. We are the only creatures in the whole universe other than demons. We, we're in league with demons here. We're the only ones, us and demons, who are disobedient to the creator. The stars obey him. The waves obey him. Cockroaches on the ground never disobey God. They don't blaspheme God. We do. That's the truth. Everything is God. Everything is divine. So when you do good things, when you tr decide to transcend the negativity and attempt to do something positive for you, for your family, you are the heart of God. You are you're the heart of God. You're the eyes of God. Everything is God. You're God. You're divine. Everything's divine except Jesus. That's how, that's how pantheism works, and that's really the road the Catholic Church is on now. All religions uh, lead to God. It's just sort of like a buffet of wisdom. Everything is God. But of course, Jesus of Nazareth, he's not God. We're not going to focus on that. That's what pantheism leads to. It leads to everything is God except Christ, because he claimed to be the fullness of God dwelling in a body. Are the eyes of God, when you speak from that place, you are God's voice. And when you make a loaf of bread in this place, in this kitchen, that is a Eucharist. You're the, you're the heart of God. You're the eyes of God. Now, when you do your good works, are the body and blood of Jesus. You see, it sounds so good. It's blasphemy. You're blessing people with your work. You're serving the world with your work, with your effort. That is your work, effort. It sounds good, 
but we don't point towards the perfect work of Christ, the true grace of God, the image of God, Jesus Christ. It's all about him. It's not about us, and the world hates that. The Eucharist, that is the body of Christ. You know, and I thank you for everything you're doing. You're amazing. You're champions. And so I just, uh, I just want to finish w- with a few verses. You know, you're, you're champions. I admire you. Listen, listen. I want to be sweet to people. I want to be gentle to people. But I want to be truthful to people overall because the, tru- the Bible says, buy the truth and do not sell it. When the devil was speaking before his fall, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 14, he says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. I'll make myself like God. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent said, oh, you won't die. God's a liar. You won't die when you break the law, when you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open. You'll be wise. You will be like God. God, the very same rebellion the devil and the demons have started, they have brought humanity into. And Jim Carrey is nothing but a spokesperson and saying the exact same thing the devil said thousands and thousands of years ago. And we are listening with, you know, uh, tears in our eyes and we're opening up our ears and these people but my heart breaks for these simple people there they're 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 looking for something some sort of emotion to stir them and get them through the day and they're just listening to silliness and it's really just lifting their up themselves up in their pride listen to what the lord says about this type of prosperity preaching this type of false wisdom he says do not listen to the words of the prophets the preachers that are talking to you. They're leading you into futility, worthlessness. They speak a vision of their own imagination, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, those who hate the true God of the Bible, the Lord has said, you will have peace. You will have grace, as Jim Carrey says, as he just sort of anoints them all, right? And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, you can continue on being stubborn. Doesn't matter. Just keep on going. Doesn't matter. They say calamity will not come upon you. And then God warns about his fury going forth like a tornado and saying, in the last days, you'll understand this. But then he says, if they had stood in my counsel, if preachers, if evangelists, if pastors had stood in my counsel, if they, w- if they would have announced my words to my people and would have turned them back from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds. You see, that is what Scripture does. That is what true people speaking for God do. They don't say you're amazing all the time. They don't lift you up in your pride. They don't make it all about you. They are gentle. They are loving. But first and foremost, they make sure that you have a true and uh, like biblical understanding of what Christ really did and our relationship to the Creator, what we've done. It might sound good to sit around and hear that you're God and you're the heart of God and you're the eyes of God. And 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 every time you do anything good, it's like a, you're the body and blood of Christ and you are God. I mean, what's more prideful than that? Listen to Scripture. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You see, Jesus' voice is the Word of God. He is the Word made flesh. Listen to Romans chapter 3. There is none righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There's no one who seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become useless. That word means worthless. Beloved, I'm not saying you go up to the street to a trauma victim or, or a prostitute or a drug addict and go tell them they are worthless. I'm recommending you love them. I'm recommending you, you, you buy them clothing. You get them food. You get them water. You let them know you care about them. But the, the, the thing you have to let them understand is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the good news is even though there's no one who does good and there's no one who seeks for God, Christ came to his enemies. He offers forgiveness to his enemies. And he can do that because he, he died for the ungodly, the Bible said. The Bible says, while we were still helpless, we're not transcendent, we're not amazing, we're not, we're not great, while we are helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. And if you want to receive this salvation, if you want to be a child of God, if you want true healing in your life, which I really want for you, You got to understand, even Jesus himself, when he was preaching his own gospel, his own good news, that he was going to bear the wrath of God for the sins of anyone who will believe, 
He started it with the word repent. The word repent, study that word. Make sure you understand what it really means. It's a turning away from sin in your mind, in your heart. It's fasting and mourning, not an actual work. That's not actually going to save you, but it's a genuine sorrow for sin. It's done all throughout the Bible. Faithful preachers from Enoch to Noah before the flood to Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist, Jesus, Peter, Paul, all the faithful preachers of God have always been counseling all of creation since the fall in the garden. You have to repent. You have to turn away from that sin and believe in the gospel. Trust Jesus Christ completely for your salvation We are worthless. We have fallen so horribly into sin. We've sinned against a holy God. His wrath is burning. And the only thing, our only hope is to humble ourselves and cast ourselves upon the mercy and grace of God in Christ. Jesus is God. We are not. We are the, I want to make this clear. We are the farthest thing from God. We are disobedient to the creator. There's entire planets and solar systems and galaxies, the earth, animals, everything is obedient to him, and we have disobeyed and fallen. And the consequences of that are unbearable and unimaginable. Like Cain said in the Old Testament when God banished him, my punishment is more than I can bear but it's still justice for what we've done against God. And so if I love you, I need to tell you, you are not God. And no matter what you've gone through, my heart breaks for you and I'm here to help you, but you still have to repent and turn away from your sin and believe in the good news that Christ died for the ungodly and that he rose again as a sign that God had accepted Christ's righteousness and Christ's atonement for our sins. Not just the gentle, loving attitude of Christ, the literal Christ sacrificed himself. That's supposed to pierce your heart. The Bible says godly sorrow works salvation. So you're supposed to be sorrowful for your sin, not lifting yourself up and thinking you're transcendent and like God. Repent, turn to Jesus, and believe in the good news.